Janet Kuypers, the one and only Janet Kuypers, the most amazing artist, and I'm so delighted to have her here with me tonight. Janet is going to be reading to us. Um, she has, oh my goodness, she's got more new books than you can <laughs> shake a stick at, and she's got another one in the works. It's the Periodic Table of Poems, um, which is based on the Periodic Table of Elements. Each, one, each poem yeah is written for one of the elements yeah. and so it's it's really a significant body of work whoa <laughs> a very prolific writer janet kuypers janet welcome well hello there yeah it's great nice to so, be here yeah it's great having you here i love having you on the wizard i love the studio it's a great space i adore thank it you. So thank you thank you i really do so janet has um a venue that she hosts and it's called the Gallery Cabaret. And the venue it? is at Gallery Cabaret. It's the Cafe Gallery Poetry Open Mic. That's right. every other Wednesday, mm -hmm. usually from seven till nine p.m. Mm -hmm. And it's the the bar um, Gallery Cabaret is at twenty twenty North Oakley. Um, which is for you, Chicago is very close to Armitage and Western. Which very close to where we host the Bucktown Arts Fest. Yes, definitely. Which is, you know, close to the Blue Line L stop mm -hmm. and tons of free parking. And it's a great fun space. And I could talk about how great the bar is because I've got great beer prices. But yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a great space. For it's a wonderful people. venue. In fact, the uh, Wizard is going to be hosting a couple of events there this fall. Very cool. So, yeah, we're, we're psyched about that. So we love to talk up the game. Gallery Cabaret. And um, you have, um, who's coming in this week? Oh, what, to the open mic? Oh, well actually, there's a there's an added bonus because the next show is a week and a half from now, which is the 7th, I believe, is the Wednesday of October, uh -huh. or the 8th is the Wednesday. Um, but the day beforehand, on the 7th, we have a bonus show. It's not really for the poets, it's for the musician that's there. Francois Leroux, the Haman of South Africa, is going to be coming in town with um, Yoke from Belgium. Um, they're actually doing a show, but they are really begging for improv, for people to be able to walk up on stage and to be able to perform with them. And that, I did a call out to my poets. I said, you know, go out there if you've got something to say, which I've already, I've got this very tiny thing so I could read something and then spout and just go into anything. And I've decided I'm actually going to bring my magic eight ball along and say, so are we doing a good job with the environment? Shake, 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 shake. All indications point to no, and I can go on some sort of spouting <laughs> thing or whatever, and have my magic eight ball for doing some improv, cool, some yeah, something in it. Like a so, and I think that um, other musicians are welcome, or anybody that has something that they would be able to perform with the Hot Man of South Africa. Yeah, so which doesn't necessarily have to be music; it could also be improvisers. Exactly, improv people. I mean, whatever might be, you know, I'll work with this and come up with something. And although it is not technically a scheduled event for Chicago Calling, this is genuinely what Chicago Calling is. Yes. Show off your work with somebody from outside of the greater Chicagoland Absolutely. area. Well, we have somebody from pretty much the opposite side of the planet, yeah. so yes. that seems fair. <laughs> yes, an amazing artist. Oh my goodness. The cello that he brings is just, oh, it's just phenomenal. Oh, oh, oh. I heard it. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> does. We all, you know, all the women get all swoony when you <laughs> pull up the cello and play music. It's so oh, true. It is so, so awesome. true. So, yes. so I'm thrilled with being able to do that. And uh, and as I said, the next night, and because we've got so many people and we've got a two-hour night, we often have two features, and we've got two features, two women features that are coming up in the, in that week and a half from now. And oh, yeah? Who, who's that? Lucia Blinn and Pam Miller. Oh, Pam Miller. I know Pam Miller. She's Pam. hysterical. Yeah, so the, those are our two features. And I believe two weeks from that, we've got GPA, the Poetic Ensemble. Oh, boy, what with, a guy. With the other feature is Charlie Newman. Nice. Like what a dynamic duo. It just blows my wow. mind that people have got coming in to do this stuff. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I do have to say, especially because of Chicago Calling, and you mentioned the periodic table stuff, mm -hmm. I usually um, introduce, perform periodic table poems first at Features, and um, I just did one uh, on the 12th of um, September at Let Them Eat Chocolate uh -huh. from Poetry Love Letter, but um, the next one I'm going to do, which is my last feature 
of Periodic Table Poems because I'll be doing my last pieces there. Elizabeth Marino is hosting a Chicago Calling Night at Cup and Spoon on the next day, Thursday. It's going to be a busy week that week. Nice. <laughs> and yeah, so it is a be, busy week. So, and I will have music from the Hamid of South Africa in the background while I'm doing these last pieces. Great. So, so there's your Periodic Table Oh, well, that'll be something to look forward to. Yay. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, Janet, you have tell me something about your new book. The book, the book series. I, I, I looked at it and I thought the last time I had actually released a book of poetry was, well, I did one in 2004, but pretty much 1997 was the last time I had a huge volume of 200 pages plus or whatever of poetry, which I looked at and I said, I've written a it's lot. It's 10 years. Yes. I, yeah, from since, but since 97, that, since I produced these this year, that would be like 17 years. And I'm like, I have a lot of stuff. And a lot of it is stuff I've done in performance art shows. Um, a lot of his little blocks of prose as well. And I said, I'm going to put it together. And um, I don't know who came up with the idea of the title, but I said, I want to put on the background image, because all my past books were like a solid color. Mm -hmm. um, I said I want to put a collage of webbing image from x-rays from my mammogram. Ooh! Now it's not just a blank shot of a of breast that you're seeing there. I just It looks like this webby and it looks kind of bluish when you look through it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, because this, these books, this book would say a lot about me, I thought Partial nudity would be a good title for it because yeah. the cover can have something with the inside of my breasts. Sure, sure. <laughs> but wow. I, I started calling them partial nudity, Janet Kuiper's reveal. But then I'm like, one book is just too huge. This would be like six, seven hundred pages. So I put it into a second one that was just called Revealed. And when I looked at these two, three hundred, four hundred page books, I thought, I don't know if people would want to buy huge tomes like this. So when I started doing it, I started, you know, partial nudity. I, I, I think that's the coolest title. And and actually, my husband came up with the idea. I said, I, I, I've always just have something like a bar or something across the cover. And he said, why don't you take a picture of yourself that is on your webpage, JanaKuypers.com. And that's a picture of me jumping on a hotel bed. <laughs> and I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And I'm like, uh -huh. well, let me clone that out so that it looks like it's, I'm not wearing anything. Yes, I just put the yes. bar in the way. Um, and, but it is, as I said, it's a lot of stuff from like past performance art shows and things like that. But as I said, as I had gone through this, I said, I, I don't know if anybody's going to want to buy a big book like this. So as I was designing these things, I thought, why don't I make a bunch of mini books of all of these things? So a bunch of Twitter length poems, Twitterati. The right. tweets, the tweet elite. You know, um, I've got ones, you know, things about dreams. I have did a lot of dreams poems when you dream tonight. And I've got a shot of my own a photo of the moon that I yes. you know, put in with this. I've got news related ones and the things Billy says shows that have this one, which is called Rape, Sex, um, Sexism, Life and Death, because it talks about, because I worked as a um, acquaintance work workshop facilitator for years. Of stories about rapes and the like and 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 the, the treatment the poor treatment of women and I also have a number of pieces about um, almost dying in an auto accident many years ago and so I was working with someone um, that lives in Europe and I said I, th I think we should put our stuff together and get some translations so he knew somebody that could translate stuff. So some of the poems that are in here have with them Slovak translations. Cool. Not that anybody here in the States can read that, but it's still kind of a there cool are thing. There people who but, can read that. You'd be surprised. But, but I just thought that's something I want to be able to have in there to include. But yeah, I've got like, I started doing these stacks of many different little books based on different shows and the like. But, um, but I still, you know, it's my book, it's personal movie. And, and when you look through these books, once you've got them put together, there's a section and it's Twitterati or it is I in reference see. to these little volumes. And that's what it says on the header pages in different sections of the books. So, so if somebody wants to find your book, where will they go? Well, you can go to JanetKuypers.com or I'd, since these things are published through um, the organization that runs SCARS Publications, you can always go to SCARS.TV. Easy enough. Scars.tv. Yeah, that's pretty easy. And uh, and 
yeah, you can find links to the book section or to my name or to whatever. Um, one of the things at Scars Publications, we even have a section that is called the writing section. If you click on it, poof, a window appears in frames. On the left hand frame, it's just a long old list of names, author names. And if you click on any name, whoop, it'll drop down whatever they've had published at Scars. Click on that, their writing appears in the right frame. And if you click on any writing and it happens to appear in a book or something, it'll have a link at the top. By the way, it was in this. And you can order something or see details about the books there as well. So there are many places online with that that you can see it. And I even try to make a point to put the QR codes on the back of the books as well. I'm like, John, check it out. And he takes his phone and scan. Oh, yep, that's the printer page where you can order this book if you wanted to know about it. So I'm trying, I'm trying to find as many different ways to be as technologically savvy about it to be non-luddite or something right. I don't know. okay, okay. <laughs> so but there's a lot of stuff in these books and there are a lot of long ones and actually this is something I found funny I decided that because I do video recording of um, the open mic or if I go reading places um, I have a lot of individual videos of myself reading these things and I decided that I would have an index in the back that would list the um, YouTube links. Oh, nice! And then I thought, this is going to be like 16 pages long, Whoa. just because there's a lot of stuff and there are right. a lot of poems. So I said, why don't I just try to put the links at the bottoms of these pages? Oh, that's and smart. Now I can look and say, oh, have I ever read this before? Yes, because I have a video link that will nice. actually confirm it. <laughs> so, Great. so yeah, I've been doing that. And I even started to, uh, especially in June, I did a feature for this book release and I had one section even that was called um, Gorilla Haiku Readings. I asked a bunch of people, would you be willing to read a haiku during my feature? Like I'll pick something that I think is best suited to you, blah blah blah. And uh, they said yes. And I gave them a page and I said there are two on this page. You're going to read your haiku and then you're going to hand me that and I'm going to have to read the next one. <laughs> you know? So this will just be like, well you pick out your order you know, leave it at that. I even went to an open mic where somewhere else where I knew, oh, I know these guys aren't going to be able to make it. Would you mind? And I was like thinking of this and scribbling out haikus from a smartphone on paper. Would you be willing to read a haiku? Okay, sure. I've got Charlie Newman going. It's amazing how much of your life you can fit in a single suitcase. <laughs> And then he sticks out his tongue, and I'm like, I've got this on video. I'm like, I have this filler to great. put in with this, you know, and that, and people even would react for stuff like that if sure. they'd see it. But it was really, really funny because I'm like, well, all you poets are people that want to get up on stage and do something. So then there was just like, people just figure out an order and be like, well, all right, I'll come next. Um, like a periodic table poem that I had my chemist Avram say. Um, I wish I could remember it very specifically. I'm not going to look it up. It's, uh, it's arsenic and penicillin, which I could look up in the periodic table book, too, if I wanted to, um, that says arsenic was used in pre-penicillin days to cure syphilis. Whoa! How can arsenic cure anything? Exactly. You when you, when, I, when you don't know, when you don't know anything about it, like you learn the history of this. Right. And this is what I get to learn while I'm doing, you know, periodic table studies. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, my brain. Yes. There's like a lot of weird. I mean, I don't know what made me do that. Which, which is not in these partial nudity books. Oh, okay. It is its own separate entity. Blah blah blah. All right. Which hasn't been released. Okay. But if I release it, I might sell it for. $11.18 because it covers elements 1 through 118. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll say, I don't know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, you're going to read us some poetry. I would, I would love to. Um, and I could read poems. To, and actually, I was thinking, see, this is how I try to figure out different ways to get myself out there. Um, Vine, vine.co or whatever it is, where you do six second videos. And they're six seconds long and that's all and you've got to deal with that and uh, I was thinking of starting up an account or whatever just so that I can pull that up and instead of having you know weird funny pictures or whatever in six seconds to see how if I can read haikus in six seconds and so I have a bunch of haikus actually that I haven't read even if they were in the feature with other people reading or not um, I have a bunch if you are willing and I I guess I have to time it to see if I can get them within six seconds 
Okay. Are you ready for that? Sure. All right. Um, I'll introduce them and then I'm going to actually time this. But this um, is a poem called Civil. A civil war is raging in me and I want a revolution. Nice. Civil, civil, civil ones. This one I like. And I'm, sa I'm surprised I haven't read it because I like this one. This one is called Mirror. I look and see all that you've affected. The world. This house. The mirror. Nice. Like you affected me and I uh -huh. look in the mirror and uh -huh. you did that one, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and there are so many different emotional values. I mean, a lot of them, I know the premise is supposed to be based on nature, but I'm just emotional either way, so we'll, <laughs> we'll just deal with emotion. This one is called Instead. We destroy value instead of fighting for it. It's truly amazing. Which is so, you know, hey, we see something of value, let's reject it or do something and destroy something that is otherwise good. Which we often do in so, so many different aspects of yes. our lives. And here I go comment, commentating. Yeah, I, love your, I love your commentary, it's great. Yeah. Um, oh, I like this one. It's just simple. This one is called Need. I need to record these things to remind myself that I am alive. Yes. So, I can just leave that one. Th this one wasn't a Twitter link poem, but I've tried to shorten it to see, because I think you'll find this one funny. Let me see if I can do this one. This is called Eight People Outside. It's a shortened version, but... With public smoking illegal, a Chicago bar had eight people smoke outside, and no one inside. <laughs> Exactly. You know, I'm like, I drive by and I'm like, what? There's eight people outside and Smoking nobody, and nobody was in the bar. That is crazy. <laughs> oh, this one. I don't know where I come up with these, but this one's called Floor. Writhing on the floor, bruised, she cried, begged for an end. I had a killer. Ooh. Why? Where are these things come from? I'm sorry. <laughs> this one, I is humorous. Um, this one's called, at least I think, it, well, it's emotionally interesting. This one is called Of His Thirst. Of my dead Scotsman, they spoke of his drinking, but never of his thirst. Ooh. <laughs> and this one I think is cute. Now I can end with a cuter one. Well, not end. I got too many of these, but they're so fast. Uh, this one is called Hold. Hold my hand so I can feel hearts, cupids, sunshine all over again. Nice. <laughs> like, <aw. laughs> this one is called Fought. A thousand wars are fought in your honor, swinging battle axes high. Yeah. Well, if you want to get it done, you're like, I'm going to fight for this. And sure. Swinging battle axe is high.